Hello, HyperCycle community. This is Raymond Mata checking in here. I am the tech support lead in customer success. Today, we're going to be exploring the HyperCycle Explorer, the blockchain explorer. It tells us more about the blocks on our network, our license nodes, and also the tilling status of those licenses. So here is the HyperCycle Explorer. You can get here by going to explorer.hypercycle.ai in your web browser. Uh, and when you open it up, the first page you're going to see here is a block explorer. On the left side here, you have block height, you have the hash, how long ago it was it was uh, created, and the chain ID, which is always going to be the same. So a few interesting facts and information about this blockchain. This blockchain structure utilizes a two-minute block interval to ensure timely updates and data integrity. Each block contains license heartbeats and the computations received by each license. These are hashed together, which are essential for tracking the status and performance of licenses. This data, including metadata and block hash, is organized in a Merkle tree format, allowing efficient verification and retrieval of information through its hierarchical structure. HyperCycle is a ledgerless layer zero plus plus blockchain network where AI agents collaborate via high speed, peer to peer, low cost on chain microtransactions, creating the Internet of AI. So with that information, if we have a two minute interval for blocks, and our block height here is currently at 605,123. Um, that would put our very first block in around April 7th of 2023. So fun trivia, this network is a little over two years old now, about a, uh, two uh, years and four months. Our first reporting node license actually on Cardano came in on block 302,032 on September 20th, 2023. And our first Ethereum node license in block 416,857 on January 30th of 2024. Okay, so here on this page, we have a list of all the most recent blocks. It's their block right here. Again, these are two minute intervals. We click on the most recent one. We're gonna see all the licenses that are reporting inside of this block, um, starting with the older licenses and master nodes that are on the Cardano network. Uh, coming all the way back to licenses that are on the Ethereum and also now base network. If we drill in here, maybe to this one, you'll see this guy is on the Ethereum chain. He's been uh, in creation for 1,232 hours. He's got great uptime, got a 99% uptime. Here are the timestamps for these for this guy uh, on the Ethereum network. Again, you have your block heights. You can actually go all the way back to the very beginning very first block. This is that block that's over two years old now. This is the very first block on the HyperCycle network. And click in there and you'll see that there are no licenses reporting. Again, that very first license that reported came in on September 20th, 2023. That was one of 17 master nodes off of the Cardano network. Uh, that was the very first one. And the very first license on the Ethereum network came in on January 30th. So if we come back over to the Explorer. Let's say you're in your DAP. Okay, you've connected your wallet, you're looking at your node factory, and you have your licenses here. If you copy the license out of one of the node factories, the license ID, you can go ahead and copy that to the clipboard, come back over to the Explorer, paste that into the search box and change this to licenses, and then click on your little app, the uh, magnifying glass, you're gonna get a, uh, a search result for this particular license. Go ahead and click on that. And this will pull up information about this license, its uptime, downtime, its chilling history, et cetera. So this is one of the ways that you can uh, make sure that your licenses are chilling. Um, again, in the transition that's happening between HTS and HMS, right, we're, we're transitioning as we speak, and HMS is going to be up very soon. During that transition, there are a lot of up and downs that are happening on the back end as those transitions and migrations are made. So remember, for those of you who right now, if you go and you don't see that your, your license either shows up uh, it, or is alive and it's showing a dead status, you can report that through a ticket if you like and make sure that we have that in a log. But more than likely what's happening is there's a migration and a, and a transition happening on the back end and that license will come up and show up in HMS with its tilling history and resume tilling. So you don't have to worry about it. You will see a 5X credit on in HMS for all that lost uptime and tilling and then a 1.5X credit 
uh, for having created a, a subscription within HTS prior to um, the launch of HMS. So this is that license out of one of my own node factories here. It's got a good uh, uptime. Here is the timestamp. Um, you can also see here, this, this particular piece of information is the block height that this was created in, okay? So this gives you a little bit of information about um, when that license first became visible on the HyperCycle network. So let's explore a little bit what's inside of each of these blocks. Each block in, has a, uh, a record of all the licenses, all the, the, the nodes on the network that are reporting, that are chilling, that are active. So for example, if I click on this license here, so this license has a total time, meaning from creation date of 16,241 hours. It's been up for 15,000 hours, giving it a percent up of 94.49%. And if you notice here, this is one of 17 master nodes. The very first master nodes on HyperCycle are actually active and tilling on the Cardano network. They, they were The NFTs for those master nodes were created on Cardano. Uh, so those very those 17 first master nodes are actually Cardano based, um, and here you see under uptime reports just a little bit of, of information about the tilling status. So for example, this guy here, um, the timestamps that you see here are going to change when there's a change in the status. So for example, if a node goes up or down, or there's some configuration change. So in this case, you can see. Um, there is a alternating status here between alive and dead. And this dead status you can see happened here on May 14th um, and it wasn't dead for very long. Um, so whenever you see that dead status, it's good to actually take a look at what the timestamp for that status is. Look at the timestamp before, at the, the, the last alive before that status and then the alive after that and see how long that node is actually down for. Okay, now let's go take a look at some of the stats. So when you're at explorer.hypercycle.ai, you're on this page here where you see the blocks, block height. There's a link here, stats. Go ahead and click on stats. And stats will give you a more visual overview of what's happening on the network, uh, starting with the number of online nodes, the total factories created, the total supply of, of hypercycle, and how much of that has been deployed into these node factories. Here in this section, what you're seeing are the most recent node factory creations. So there's actually some recent activity in node factories that are being created here. The last one was created yesterday. And you have a history here of all these node factories that have been created. Uh, their license number, the owner, the wallet here, and the timestamp of the block that that license, that node factory was created in. Over here in this block, you get a nice uh, bar chart breakdown of the number of node factories that have been created, let's say for the month of July, it's 41. In June, we had 29. May was a big month uh, and a big push. Just before that snapshot for the Anfis at 821 node factories that were created. So over here in this section, the licenses level section, you have a nice bar chart representation of uh, how many node licenses are, are at each level that are reporting here. So here you have a level 19, that's 512 nodes, 146 of those. All the way to your, your smallest node license it represents a single node. This is 363 licenses and then of course everything in between. This license owner's distribution area here is interesting. It, this, this shows you what some of our larger node factory uh, owner holders are. So for example, if you click here, you get a, the address of this particular wallet copied to the clipboard. It has 43 uh, node factories. You come over here, head over to the uh, Etherscan blockchain explorer for Ethereum plug in that particular wallet and you'll see a history of the transactions for that wallet. Um, and inside that history, you'll see the node factories created and all that kind of stuff. Of course, there's complete privacy and anonymity here. We don't know who this is. Um, and that's one of the cool things about blockchain. There's a transparent audit trail for all of these actions that we could use, um, but there's no name or any kind of uh, personal identity that is associated with this particular explorer. Um, so that privacy is maintained uh, across the, the blockchain ecosystem here. Verification successful. Uh, and so here we have, you know, you can actually even see in the transaction history, um, these are all voting approvals, proposed new, creating new node factories, probably some also some uh, some HTS chilling transactions here as well, et cetera, et cetera. So that's what you can see just by going into um, a license here in this particular chart, top 25, top 50, et cetera. Um, down here we have nodes. So these are all the reporting nodes, all these guys here. They're all re uh, reported down in this node section here. 
And if you click on any one of these nodes, it, it tells you um, how long it's been running, et cetera. And it'll give us a, uh, come here and give you a, a nice uh, JSON, JSON format view of what's happening with this particular node, what, what kind of platform it's running on, how long it's been running, what kind of license it has on it, its uptime, et cetera. Um, and, you know, sometimes uh, node names get real interesting. If you come back here, you get the monkey brains node and different nodes that are in, being tested on our network. Uh, monkey brains node here. They'll tell you a little bit about what's going on with this particular node. Um, its version, uh, its ID, uh, what mainnet it, it's on, what address it has uh, attached to it. And what it's doing here, you can see this is a, a large language model aim that's being tested here. Some information about that aim here. And, and uptime statistics and the license being used to enable the aim here as well. So quite a bit of, of information here contained in the Explorer. Down here at the bottom of the uh, Explorer stat page, we have the Tilling subscription section. So this is going to be a, a you know just an overview of all the Tilling subscriptions uh, and all the licenses associated with them here across the entire network. So quite a bit of information here, all the way to 421 pages. Obviously, there's a lot of subscriptions out there. Uh, and we can just click on any one of these and they'll give us some information again in this format about this license, uh, what node it's tilling on and what its uptime is here. Okay. Okay. I hope you enjoyed our HyperCycle Explorer video tutorial. Uh, exciting times for HyperCycle. HMS is right on the horizon. It's coming very soon in these next couple of weeks here after this video. This is officially HyperCycle Explorer version 1.5. There will be updates coming. These pages will change over time. Of course, we have Anfi now. We have our base network. There's a lot of things happening. We have compute coming online. We'll probably see statistics and metrics for that as well. Excited about it. A pleasure having you guys in the community. Look forward to seeing you again. Thank you.